Hey friend, if you're an actor or other professional voice user and you're not intimately acquainted with your glottis, today is the day we remedy that. Hi, I'm Kate Lachine. I'm a voice and dialect coach with a passion for health and wellness. You can learn more about me at katelachine.com and if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe below. Let's get started. First of all, what is the glottis? The glottis is actually the space between your vocal folds. And so this means it's located in your larynx. So go ahead and place a hand on your neck, kind of right here in the middle, and swallow. And when you do, you'll feel your larynx go up and then come right back down. And this is the area that you wanna focus on throughout the rest of this video. So the glottis exists, meaning it's open as you breathe and within the vibratory pattern of phonation. So anytime you speak, sing, or otherwise use your voice, your vocal folds open and close multiple times per second. Let's see if we can get some physical awareness of the glottis and ultimately your vocal folds. And there are a couple ways to do this. First, you could try lightly, very lightly coughing. You might feel a little pressure as your vocal folds come together and then a release along with the puff of air associated with that little cough. Next, you could also try saying uh-oh as slowly as possible and really bring your attention to your larynx and just see what you notice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And again, you might feel that little uh Oh, as you bring your vocal folds together, the pressure builds up underneath them, and then they open and vibrate uh, as you say, uh and oh. You can also try manipulating your breath with the laryngeal muscles. So this can be tricky to do because you might start to recruit other muscles like up in your pharynx or in other parts of your vocal tract, but let's give it a try. So I'm gonna breathe out and I'm gonna try and narrow my glottis or shape it differently with my laryngeal muscles. And what you'll hear is a small increase in volume and a slight change in the quality of the sound. Now, this may work in either direction. If you don't know what it feels like to control your vocal folds, then just try imitating the sound I'm making and see what you notice, the different sensations that you might have in your larynx. If you know how to control your vocal folds, then just play around with the sound like I just did. I hope you're now feeling in touch with your glottis and vocal folds, but why is this important for actors? Well, a couple of very important reasons. First is the matter of your vocal health. As you just experienced, an audible exhalation takes some muscular effort. So an audible inhalation might indicate that there's some excess tension or that you're kind of habitually holding tension in your laryngeal muscles. Now chronic tension is not part of the recipe for healthy voicing. When you're at rest, your inhalation and exhalation should be fairly silent. But if you hear your breath, don't jump to any scary conclusions about the state of your larynx. However, if you're also experiencing vocal fatigue or hoarseness, you might wanna to get to your otolaryngologist just to be sure that everything's okay. Also related to vocal health is the difference between a glottal onset and a smooth onset. So when a word starts with a consonant sound, your articulators, your lips, teeth, tongue, soft palate, those things take the brunt of starting the sound. But when a word starts with a vowel sound, your vocal folds take the brunt of initiating that sound. A smooth onset is just what it sounds like, a smooth initiation of that vibration. So it might sound like this. Apple. Now, a glottal onset is a harder banging together of the vocal folds to start that sound. So think of the coughing we did earlier. Glottal onsets are less of a problem in everyday speech, but hundreds of glottal onsets at full stage volume are really fatiguing to the voice. And it matters in film, television, and radio as well because microphones amplify the sound of the glottal onset and it gets to be fairly unpleasant to listen to. So actors and other professional voice users really need to be in control of this aspect of speech. To smooth out your glottal onsets, practice words that start with vowel sounds by putting an H in front of them. Then work to gradually reduce that H sound until you have a smooth onset. Happel. Happel. Apple, apple, apple. Another good reason to get to know your glottis is because of how it features in dialect work. So if a glottal onset starts a word, a glottal stop stops phonation either in the middle or at the end of a word. Now, glottal stops feature in languages from all around the world, but I mostly encounter them when I'm coaching dialects from the UK and maybe a couple from here in the US. 
So if I were coaching someone to be Scottish, or perhaps I'm teaching a few varieties of English, uh, then I would probably recommend some glottal stops. Now, whether the glottal stop occurs in the middle or at the end of the word, it usually replaces a consonant sound like t or other plosive sounds. For example, Scottish becomes Scottish and varieties becomes varieties. And that funny looking little question mark like symbol, that indicates the glottal stop. So whether it's for vocal health or for learning a dialect, getting to know your glottis is ultimately getting to know your vocal folds better. And that's imperative for any actor. There were just so many opportunities for glottal stops in that sentence that I just couldn't help myself.